Utah's news leader. Fox 13's Good Day Utah at 4.30 starts right now. Now at 4.30, a mass shooting in California impacting many Asian and Asian American families right here in Utah. We'll show you how. And wind advisories are in effect for parts of Utah today, which areas are expected to be a concern and for just how long. And Olympic snowboarder Jamie Anderson wants to raise awareness and increase participation of girls in board sports. Good morning, and thank you for beginning your Monday with us, Damon. You know, no snow this morning, but my goodness, it is cold out there. It is very cold, yeah, and it's going to feel even worse because those winds, as you mentioned, are going to be picking up. Right now, a little gusty across parts of southwest Wyoming near Rock Springs, also uh, portions of southwest Utah. What we have listed along the Wasatch Front is pretty light, but don't let that fool you. The winds are going to be very strong uh, near the canyons from Salt Lake County, stretching north along the Wasatch Front up into eastern Box Elder County. And some of those might be gusting up to 45 miles per hour or higher. So that's obviously going to make travel difficult for some folks. And if you live in those areas near the mouths of the canyons, make sure there's nothing outside that uh, could get blown around or just blown away that you don't want to lose. Otherwise, uh, a beautiful look north from the Intermountain Camera with a temperature of 21 in Salt Lake and Ogden, 18 currently in Provo. So even if it's not windy where you live, you really need to bundle up when you head out and be prepared for more of the same for the next several hours. In fact, we'll be hovering in the upper teens in the Salt Lake Valley all the way through the morning commute. Otherwise, it'll become partly cloudy today. We'll let you know what it'll look like this afternoon coming up in the rest of the forecast. Damon, thank you. The suspect in the Monterey Park Lunar New Year's shooting is dead. Investigators say he shot himself inside a white cargo van in Torrance, California, as police surrounded that car early Sunday. The van is similar to a vehicle of interest. Authorities say was spotted near a second attempted shooting late Saturday night. That failed shooting came about a half an hour after 10 people were killed and 10 more injured inside a ballroom dance studio. Live from Utah's news leader, Fox 13's Good Day Utah at 5 starts right now. Now at 5, the SWAT situation in Salt Lake City ends with a suspect behind bars. Hear about the moments leading up to the arrest. The Biden administration is pitching in to help mitigate wildfire risk here in Utah. How much money is going toward projects here in the Beehive State? And Ogden's tattoo convention kicks off today. How organizers hope to bring the community together. Okay, can I ask, does anybody have a tattoo here? <laughs> I do not. Well. Nope. Uh, okay. <laughs> no comment? No comment. All right. Oh, no yeah, comment. sorry. That kind of put everybody on the spot. Which really is the answer. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that, that exactly. is the, no answer is an answer. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the forecast today. Yes. Uh, another is, chilly one. It's going to be looking better. Yeah. Cold uh, this morning. We're still dealing with some snow, even though the storm itself is sliding across Arizona, where uh, most of the snow on the radar is showing up. We have snow showers in the southern part of Utah that aren't being detected very well. And in the north, uh, a little bit coming down, mainly some flurries, very spotty, should be light. But again, with it being as cold as it is, even any light snow could make for some slick spots out there. So you need to keep that in mind as you're heading out. Well, good morning and welcome to Good Day Utah. The time is now 5.30 as we take a live look outside from our Natural History Museum camera at our snow-covered foothills there. I'm Dan Evans. And I'm Carrie Cronk. We're taking a quick look at your top stories for you this morning. Police say a person who ran from officers is now in custody after barricading themselves in a motel room for hours. Salt Lake City police say the suspect is a felon who they believe was armed. There was another person inside. Police aren't sure how she's involved, but she is being detained during the investigation. Live from Utah's news leader, Fox 13's Good Day Utah at 6 starts right now. Now at 6, more snow in southern Utah and dangerously cold wind chills in the north. Coming up in the forecast, we'll let you know when we get some relief. Several schools delayed this morning due to the weather, plus the rising number of power outages we're seeing right now. 
a call for help. We always really believe that the one can of food, the one bag of dog food makes a big difference. Fox 13 News anchor April Baker shows us the work to help buy pet food for people struggling right now. I want to sit down together, work out an agreement that we can move forward. And two top U.S. leaders preparing for a big meeting Wednesday, the expected negotiation over the debt limit. Well, we drop below our cold limit. This is yeah. kind of crazy <laughs> cold here this morning. It yeah, is. that storm uh, really gave a one-two punch. First the snow and now uh, the cold air that's moved in behind it. But you know what? We are not the only ones. There's Arctic air that's made its way down into uh, much of the northern half of the country. Uh, it's 23 below right now in Rapid City, South Dakota. That's one of the uh, coldest readings there. But, you know, it was about that low in Cache Valley earlier this morning. Right now in Salt Lake City, it's 10. That's the actual air temperature. But some of the values on this map are the wind chill temperatures. In fact, it feels like it's too below in Provo. Live from Utah's news leader, Fox 13's Good Day Utah at 7 starts right now. Then after three years, the Sundance Film Festival is back in Park City. We're live with a look at the preparations and expectations for today. But we're going to do what's necessary to right this ship for the American people. The nation reaches its debt limit today and is sparking a heated battle on Capitol Hill. Just how important today's negotiations are. That's what makes us great. Not our governor, not our legislature, not your mayor. You make this state great. Governor Cox gives his State of the State speech tonight, and he's directing it to the younger generation. Hmm, I'm just checking out my breakfast brew selection here at Salt and Hops in Ogden. Stick around, especially you, Dan. <laughs> yeah. Five o'clock somewhere. Right up, up my alley. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Five o'clock somewhere, bro. Yeah. Uh, Probably in Moscow or something. Yeah. <laughs> it was 5 o'clock two hours ago. Yes, exactly. The wrong 5 o'clock, so though. <laughs> He's just getting started. Cheers. I love oh, that. What my kind of morning is this going to be? My breakfast brew selection. Yeah. Uh, way to look at it. <laughs> I don't that's know great. if that's a breakfast of champions uh, or not. Yeah, I don't think it is. <laughs> that is definitely not the uh, breakfast. He tells me it'll right. be a downhill. Okay, country. well, you probably want a hot breakfast this morning. Uh, cold start to the day, and we're gearing up for another storm. Although so far we've just got a few snow showers in the northwest deserts, uh, a little more extensive precipitation off to our west in Nevada, and the brunt of this coming storm will be over central and southern Utah, where winter weather advisories will go into effect later today. Live from Utah's news leader, Fox 13's Good Day Utah at 8 starts right now. Now at 8, a driver crashes into a building overnight. We have details on the investigation. The governor shares why he thinks the future is bright for Utah youth in his State of the State address. How the speech is being received this morning. The Winter Festival Tattoo Convention kicks off in Ogden today. How organizers hope to bring the community together. Get a load of this, a taste of this at the Hof German Fest today and tomorrow at the Ogden Eccles Conference Center. He looks like one of them. I know, it's so <laughs> mellow. It's hard to get those in the house. Yeah, I can you know? imagine. Or in the it car. It's like kids. Keep it down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All that back and forth between school and home for practice. And yeah, practice. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Swinging that around, hitting everybody on the way to school. That's right. Just awkward. <laughs> okay, well, uh, we're still dealing with a little bit of stormy weather, even though the latest system is in Arizona pulling away from us. But uh, moisture wrapped around that, keeping some snow going across southern Utah, where we have some winter weather advisories that will still be in effect for a while longer. Uh, even over the mountains, those will expire by late afternoon. But between now and then, more accumulation possible. While in the north, we're drying out and uh, we're ending up with a beautiful view from the Ochre Mountain camera looking south in Utah County. Uh, still a lot of clouds around, but they're breaking up. Live from Utah's news leader, Fox 13's Good Day Utah at 9 starts right now. Welcome back to Good Day Utah. Here's a live look from our Salt Lake Tribune camera. And you can tell by the steam out there, it's a cold one. But the good thing is the roads aren't covered in snow, ice, rain. Looks pretty good to start. Thanks for joining us. I'm Dan Evans. And I'm Carrie Cronk. This morning, we've got the key takeaways from last night's State of the State address, just in case you missed it. What the governor hopes the state will achieve this year. 
Also, throughout the show, we have the duo Hit and Miss live in studio to tell us about a free concert happening tonight. That's going to be good. And one famous film shot in Utah is turning 17 today. Want a hint? I want a hint. Okay, we're all in this together. Oh, yeah. You? Yeah, I know really? this one. Yeah, Just it was shot in my me. alma mater. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, well, yeah. there's another big hint. There's another big hint. <laughs> if you know where Dan went to mm -hmm. high school. For a little bit, yeah. All right, Damon. We're going to let you, before we give it away, I guess, just <laughs> give us away the info on the weather. Yeah, well, you know, the storm is pulling away, so it's already looking a lot better. The, the storm is actually dropping down to our south in Arizona, but there's still moisture wrapped around that that'll keep some snow going for a while longer mainly into the middle part of the day over parts of central and southern Utah. In particular, uh, Capitol Reef National Park, as well as over toward western Canyonlands and over the mountains. And then the winter weather advisories expire uh, later in the afternoon as we continue to dry out. Live from Utah's news leader, Fox 13's Good Day Utah Weekend Edition starts right now. And now at 7, we have an update for you on an officer-involved shooting, which we started covering last weekend, what we've learned about the investigation so far. Also, what the community did for one local shelter who needed help filling its food pantry shelves. And the water level at the Great Salt Lake is rising. Some good news, but what you'll no longer to be able to do or see maybe this weekend, your last weekend, to go walk along the lake bed. Good morning. So glad you're waking up with us this morning. I'm Amy Nay here along with Utah's Weather Authority, Breck Bolton, who promised some snow this Sunday morning, and it is starting to come down. And I'm delivering here, <laughs> yes. When I make a promise, I try to keep it here. We are seeing some light snow across northern Utah. Mm -hmm. Due to a cold front making its move, here's the scene. We've been showing this camera viewpoint up in Box Elder County, just northwest along I-84 near Tree Mountain. That light snow falling, as I said, we've had such cold temperatures that as the snow does fall it could quickly stick to some of the surfaces there so be careful out there as we're going to see this scene with the light snow falling from northern Utah in your morning forecast let's take a look at satellite radar where the focus again across northern Utah as that front moves through now on live at 11 two people have died their bodies were found in Taylorsville the latest from police Another chilly start to the morning, still several locations below zero, even at this hour. How long do we hang on to these cold temperatures? I'll let you know in the forecast. And there is new information in the ongoing investigation into the deadly beating of Tyree Nichols. The other officers and EMTs in the spotlight now. We begin live at 11 with a developing story. Taylorsville police are investigating a double homicide. We're now told two people were found shot inside a car. Calls came from the Atherton Park Apartments. Those are off of 45th South and west of I-15. It was around 1130 last night. Police say the man driving the vehicle had died in the car, but the passenger died after, after police arrived and tried to save that person's life. A handgun was found in the neighboring mobile home park, along with the canines tracking the path, and police are processing that in an effort to determine if that was what was used in the shooting. From Utah's news leader, Fox 13 News at Noon starts right now. Well, at the top of the news at noon, there's a major piece of legislation on domestic violence unveiled on Utah's Capitol Hill. It requires police across Utah to conduct what's called a lethality assessment when responding to family disturbances. It's something domestic violence prevention advocates and even Lieutenant Governor Deidre Henderson have been pushing for, most recently in response to the murder-suicide that killed eight in the town of Enoch. Woods Cross Senator Todd Weiler's bill also requires Utah's Department of Public Safety to track them. Those assessments would also be included in probable cause statements and charging documents brought to the courts. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. Oh, mama mia. You're watching Fox 13's The Place. We're laughing about the pizza story because we're like, okay, we both love pizza, but the yeah. people hovering over like in the giant room. 
their hair not in nets and like probably falling their bare hands Maybe don't need trying it. to make it. But we're so happy to raise money for charity. Yeah, that was a good part of the story. That's I guess. the good part of it. Happy right. Friday, Jenny Hardman, Morgan Whew. Saxon with you for the next hour. And we've, we're made to... we've made it. We've made it. It's been a week. Yeah. Well, hopefully it's you can laugh along with us. Um, we found out that earlier this week, um, one of our not so favorite boy bands. Um, you can't. Say, I mean, producer Bella is going to be mad. A new album. <laughs> yes, she is all about it. She's got the tattoo and all. And maybe those who are listening are fans of the show or fans of the 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 guys. But they released a new song, and then they announced a new album. Um, it's called So Much For Stardust. Their last album was actually back in 2018. A bill that would allow taxpayer money to be spent on private and homeschooling passed in the House today. Why opponents say it's an attempt to fix a system that's not broken. A new bill in the legislature responds to the criminal case involving the theft of pigs at a factory farm. How the sponsor says we can correct similar situations in the future. And Sundance Film Festival is underway in Park City. We'll break down the boost it brings to local businesses. Live from Utah's news leader, Fox 13 News Live at 4 starts now. And now at 4, we have team coverage of what's happening on Utah's Capitol Hill. Fox 13 News political reporter Ben Winslow is tracking several stories. But we begin with Fox 13 News anchor Bob Evans with movement on the school choice and teacher salary bills. Bob. Max and Robin, House Bill 215 is moving quickly through the legislature. After passing out of committee yesterday on a 12 to 4 vote, the bill passed the full House today. Anytime you're banning access to life-saving care, you're inviting litigation. A series of bills on transgender youth get a final vote in the Senate. Plus, more big issues that'll impact you and your family. A vote on the controversial school choice bill. And an effort to bring down prescription drug costs. Insurance should not be more important to our legislators than patients. Hear from two mothers burdened by medical bills to keep their children alive. It's a cold start to the weekend. I'm tracking one storm that's winding down and one more that's on the way. Promoting safety on the slopes. One in five individuals uh, who are out without a helmet will come in uh, with a serious brain injury. How Intermountain Healthcare Trauma Teams are helping skiers enjoy the fresh powder. Live from Utah's news leader, Fox 13 News Live at 5 starts now. We've been working diligently to strike the right balance in this policy, and I, I do believe we've got that with a firm and responsible, but also a compassionate response. It was a tense debate in the Utah Senate today as a series of bills on transgender youth came up for a final vote. Fox 13 News political reporter Ben Winslow has the story from Utah's Capitol Hill. Glad you're with us this evening, everyone. Parents now hoping legislation on Utah's Capitol Hill will save them thousands of dollars in life-saving medications for their children. Fox 13 News reporter Lucy Nelson met with them today to hear how prescription copay costs impact their families. They don't realize that maybe there's some dangers in there, especially if they feel like, oh, I'll take a risk on that guy. A new bill would bring safety measures for people dating online. What you need to know. Promoting safety on the slopes. One in five individuals uh, who are out without a helmet will come in uh, with a serious brain injury. How Intermountain Healthcare Trauma Teams are helping skiers enjoy the fresh powder. Right now, our storm is clearing out, but we've got another one on the way. Will it impact your weekend plans? Plus, how cold will it get tonight? Your forecast is coming up. Salt Lake City's main library's doors are locked. Why a sewer line replacement is keeping the building closed to the public. Tension in the Utah Senate today over legislation on transgender youth. We love these kids. We love these families. Where the bill goes from here and why Democrats say it targets the most vulnerable children in the state. Live from Utah's news leader, Fox 13 News at 9 starts right now. Good evening, everyone. Just into the Fox 13 newsroom, a one alarm fire has been put out at Fairfield Junior High School in Kaysville. 
The fire department says that at about 8 o'clock tonight, they found heavy smoke coming from a portable classroom at the school. Crews were able to put the or get the fire under control by 8.16. Nobody was in the building, we're told. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. We have a crew on the way to Kaysville to take a look at the damage. Coming up on the Fox 13 Quick Cast, Governor Spencer Cox promises to make Utah better for future generations in tonight's State of the State Address. Puppies found abandoned on a freezing rural road are getting a new lease on life. Well, the Sundance Film Festival is underway in Park City tonight, completely in person this year. Live from Utah's news leader, Fox 13's Quick Cast starts right now. Hi again, everyone. Governor Spencer Cox delivered his annual State of the State Address tonight. It was directed at Utah's youth. He called on them to live with faith in good things to come and to not fear. The governor called on the legislature to make life better for future generations with investments in education, the environment, making housing more affordable, and tax cuts. He also warned social media companies. To the social media companies who have been reckless in protecting our youth, Utah parents are putting you on notice. If you insist on fighting us, be assured that me, we are more than ready for a fight and we will win. Or you can join us and be part of the solution. Governor went on to say a lot more. You can see his full speech and the Democratic response at fox13now.com. Nine puppies left on a freezing rural road this week now have a new lease on life. The eight-week-old pups are a cross between Husky and Border Collie. They were brought into Mountain West veterinary specialists on Tuesday night. Now, the person who found them say they were left in a rural area near Plymouth. Two or three of the puppies were actually frozen to the ground. It's hard to determine how long they had gone without proper food. Um, and they had been eating rocks and pebbles uh, during that time frame. Tasha Murray with Tiny Paws Rescue showed up uh, that night to begin the process of fostering them. She says it will take six to eight weeks to get them ready for adoption. And coming up here across the state tonight, areas of icy conditions out on the roads. We have winter alerts, winter other advisories for the mountains of southwest Utah. Scipio further south, all the way into Washington County and over towards Lake Powell. So for overnight temperatures in Salt Lake City, 23 degrees, chances for snow early in the evening. For Ogden, 23. And for Provo, 22 degrees tonight. Roads are icy, especially in Provo near milepost 265. So I know roads don't look that bad right now here across the state, but I want you to travel with caution this evening and tomorrow morning. Overnight temperatures tomorrow morning around 15 to 25 throughout the state. Highs tomorrow around 25 to 35 degrees. For St. George, 43 for Friday, mid 40s this weekend. And then you've got a dry seven day forecast once you get through tomorrow. For the Wasatch Front, 33 degrees tomorrow. Morning clouds, afternoon sunshine. By Saturday, 30, our next storm moves in on Sunday, bringing us a few snow showers, quick moving system. And we are left with cold temperatures into next week with daytime highs in the 20s starting on Monday. Uh, thanks about the reminder for the roads tonight, Allison. A controversial education bill was passed by a House committee today. Representatives voted 12 to 4 in favor of House Bill 215, which would raise teacher salaries and create a school choice program. Those in favor of the bill call it a scholarship that gives parents more control to find a school that's best for their children. Those against it say it's a voucher that takes money from public schools and gives it to private schools. I believe this will help a lot of those kids that are slipping through the cracks. The use of public funds without full accountability and providing the same service public schools to still irritates me. The bill now heads to the House floor for discussion and a vote. Well, Sundance Film Festival started today in Park City and participants came from all over the world. Organizers say the goal is to make the experience something for everyone with a variety of movies and stories with a lot of talent on the big screen. Events and screenings are also happening in Salt Lake and other parts of the state with a remote option as well. 
The festival goes on for the next 10 days. That is the Fox 13 Quick Cast. Have a good night. Good night, everyone. Hey, that's the Fox 13 Quick Cast. Stay right where you are because the Fox 13 Sports page is up next. They are standing by and ready for you. Thanks again for joining us here on Fox 13. Hope you're having a great Sunday night. Tonight. And this team, I think, again, is a really great definition of team. We'll hear from Jazz play-by-play -play man Craig Bowlerjack on all things jazz and the upcoming NBA All-Star Game in Salt Lake City. The Super Bowl is set. We'll show you which teams are in after picking up wins today in the NFL. And how about the ninth-ranked Utah women's basketball team with a big-time performance today against eighth-ranked UCLA. Stay right there. The Fox 13 Sports page starts right now. Yeah, here we go. Welcome on into the Fox 13 Sports page. The Super Bowl is set. Two teams survived Championship Sunday and are in Super Bowl 57. Yeah, the 49ers and the Eagles play in the NFC Championship game, and the Eagles are the number one seed, but the 49ers went into the game on a 12-game winning streak. Yeah, playing well, but Jalen Hurts and the Eagles have looked like the team to beat all season.